Hello, I'm Steve Saul. Welcome to Northwest Today. The headlines this Monday lunchtime, the Manchester Arena Inquiry hears details about the victims of the terror attack. My name is Martin Hatt. I absolutely adore Combination Street. You're going to get asked so much more now why I've got Deirdre Marlow on you. Why not? That's <laughs> my answer to that. I'm a Coronation Street super fan and a Deirdre Barlow enthusiast. Northwest GPs are told they must offer face to face appointments after a huge rise in video consultations. The family of Martin Hett, the stockport man killed in the Manchester Arena terror attack, has described his death as cruel beyond belief. A pen portrait of Martin's been given to the inquiry into the bombing and another remembered, John Atkinson from Bury. Now, over the next two weeks, the lives of all 22 victims of the attack will be remembered. And Stuart Flinders is at the inquiry for us this lunchtime and joins us live. Stuart, first phase of the inquiry this morning heard details about Martin Hett, didn't they? Yes, and what we've been uh, hearing this morning is not just written statements from families, but also short videos that try to sum up the lives lost uh, in that terror attack. Um, and the first, as you say, was Martin Hett, 29 years old, from Stockport, and, and clearly a bit of a character as they tried to reveal in his video. We have news just coming in. Martin is fit. My name is Martin Hatt. I absolutely adore Combination Street. You're going to get asked so much more now why I've got Deirdre Marlow on you. Why not? <laughs> Well, Martin's father, Paul, uh, in his statement today said that uh, Martin's death was cruel beyond belief. He said his memory would shine brightly forever. And, Stuart, there was also a tribute today to John Atkinson from Bury. Yes, uh, you've got to bear in mind that the families are learning new things about the way their loved ones died since this inquiry began. And last week, the inquiry heard that uh, in John Atkinson's case, uh, his injuries uh, might have been survivable had he been attended earlier. His family are angry with the emergency services and his mother has told one newspaper that she regards them as murderers. You got a sense of their loss in their statements read to the court today. A sister saying we've lost the biggest part of our puzzle it can never be fixed now and his parents saying it's just not fair and the inquiry also watched today a very moving film didn't they made by the family and friends of a 14 year old girl from barra in the outer hebrides Yes, this was uh, Ailey McLeod, as you say, 14 years old, living on, uh, on Barra. She came to the concert. Uh, she was described as happy and fun-loving, even though she was shy and quiet. Uh, she played the bagpipe. She was a big Harry Potter fan. Her mother said, the whole world is shattered into pieces. There'll be more of these pen portraits for the next two weeks now uh, during the inquiry, and that will continue with the fourth today after lunch. OK, Stuart. Stuart Flinders in Manchester. Thank you. People are now banned from gathering in groups larger than six in all parts of the northwest under new national coronavirus restrictions. There's also extra rules for parts of Greater Manchester and Lancashire because of high infection rates. Bolton's still got the highest rate in the country and it's gone up again in the latest weekly figures. Its rate's now 192 per 100,000 people. Backbone with Darwin and Hindburn have the second and third highest infection rates in the country. There's also been sharp increases over the week to September 10th in Preston, Warrington, and Tameside, which are now, now in the top ten. New train timetables have come into force across the Northern Rail network today. There's now going to be more services running at peak times in the mornings and also in the evening. Now, the NHS has today told GPs they must offer face-to-face -face appointments where they're needed. It's after a huge rise in remote consultations. Now, the COVID pandemic has accelerated a growing trend for remote appointments, which many people find convenient. But some experts are worried that some patients could be missing out. Here's our health correspondent, Jill Dummigan. Good morning, Ross. Diagnosing from a distance. At this surgery in Chorley, patients ring in and then are assigned to a phone, video or face-to-face -face consultation. It's a mixed economy and that balance seems to be working well. To me, the convenience of a telephone or a video consultation in most cases um, outweighs face-to-faces. 
The advent of COVID means that the bulk of GP appointments, not just here, but everywhere, are now either online or on the phone. But that really just speeds up a process that's been happening for some time. This surgery, for example, has been offering remote appointments since 2018. So no more full waiting rooms. The patients outside seem fairly happy with that. I don't mind. I've had a phone consultation for me diabetic review and that was all right. Yeah, no problems really. And it's probably easier for me to be honest because I'm at uni in Salford. I only use online for prescriptions, that's all. And would you ever use it for a consultation? Well, I'd probably, yeah, if I had to do, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd just ring out. Like I say, I don't go online. Why do you not go online? Because I don't like using them. This surgery is still offering lots of face-to-face -face appointments. The government's concerned that others may not be. And a number of experts also fear that means GPs can miss vital clues. Any experienced GP knows that the first thing the person says to you isn't necessarily the whole story. And if you start thinking like that and you talk to people a bit more, you often find there's a lot more to it than immediately meets the eye. Professor Salisbury, though, stresses that he thinks many remote appointments are a good idea. Even post-pandemic consultations like this are likely to be the future for most of us. Jill Dummigan, BBC Northwest Today, Chorley. I do let us know if you're able to get an appointment with your GP, how have you found it? Do email us nwt at bbc.co.uk. Now, the moment Liverpool finally lifted the Premier League trophies being immortalised on the side of a wall near to their Anfield Stadium. The giant mural featuring Jordan Henderson and former captain Alan Hansen is the work of the renowned street artist Paul Curtis. We basically wanted to do a picture of Jordan with the cup, um, but we also wanted to include a nod to the past. So in that sense, we've got Alan Hansen in background representing the distant past and then the 30 year wait until we see Jordan Henderson and he's looking towards Anfield and kind of looking to the future and he's in big bright colours. I also like the contrast and I think that works well together, the black and white and the, the red together. Well, I hope Liverpool fans like it. I know a lot of the residents here like it. It has brought a little bit of interest to this part of Anfield, which is a little bit neglected. A lot of the uh, interest in the team and in Anfield itself is over by the stadium. This is a little bit on the other side. Hopefully it's done a little bit to improve the area. That's up to the residents to decide. The wait is over. Champions of England again. Well, he got in touch with me via Instagram a couple of weeks ago, but obviously they were away training. He said he wants to come down and see it. I don't know when that is. I'm not going to push him. He's a busy man. He's captain of the champions and uh, I'm sure he has a lot on his plate. But if he comes down, that would be great. Yes, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Lovely. Just hope the homeowner isn't an Everton fan. Uh, a cricket now. Lancashire and Yorkshire meet tonight in the T20 Vitality Blast. The action at Headingley and Leeds gets underway just after 6.30. The Roses' rivals meet again on Thursday at Old Trafford. Here comes the sun, here comes Owain. Hello there everyone, I do hope you're well. If it's sunshine you're after, well I have a delivery of good news this afternoon. We should see plenty of that across the northwest. A bit more in the way of cloud cover across the Isle of Man and cooler here as well with highs of 18 Celsius. But as you can see elsewhere, we'll be between 22 and 24 Celsius. Maybe a touch higher than that here or there as well actually. There is a change on the way, however, a cluster of weather fronts move towards us tonight and tomorrow. They'll introduce thicker cloud as well as some patchy rain across the northwest, but I don't think they will short term do anything to affect our temperature. Still quite warm tomorrow. It does look like things will very gradually cool off then as we head through the next couple of days and turning a bit less settled as well, perhaps, of course. I'll keep you posted as far as that's concerned. That's how it's looking. Stay safe. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Owen. That's it from me for now. We're back tonight again at 6.30 here on BBC One. Roger Johnson will be with you. Until then, make the most of that sunshine while we've got it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.